Thank you so much and I'm very excited to talk on this topic of gratitude which is part two of my talk which is all about growing and changing your world. One thank you at a time. I get excited, I'm an engineer, right? So I get excited about uh, non-quantifiable things that are important, love, compassion, uh, gratitude, likability, all those things and I try to put some frameworks around it. But gratitude was not a topic I was going to think about any longer because I was very busy with generosity. And then uh, as I started speaking at groups, I spoke to close to 1,000 people. But on the stage, everything was good. But when I got off the stage, the conversations would start relating to generosity, but quickly veer towards gratitude. And I realized that it's the twin sister of generosity. It's on the other side of the same coin. Generosity is on one face, gratitude is on the other face. But why I dug deeper into this topic was because of a disturbing conversa series of disturbing conversations about generosity that actually related to gratitude. And this is the way it worked. I had about 120 conversations on the topic of generosity, one-on-one, -on, -one, on the phone, via email. And it would always lead to one pattern. The pattern was the disturbing pattern. Like uh, if I t take a sample of 10 people, Two of them would say, you know what, this is great. A lot of people in my life, I miss them in my past. In fact, some of them I have taken for granted. I, I have not done anything for them. Luckily, they are still alive. I am going to do something back for them. And that was great. The eight out of ten people would come and tell me, that's this generosity thing and all, I didn't want to tell you anything on when you were speaking on the stage, but really, a uh, lot of people have taken me for granted. I just helped them and they just take me for granted as if I didn't matter. So if you think about it, the math does not add up, right? Like uh, two out of 10 people said they took others for granted. Eight out of 10 people said others took them for granted, which means simple mathematics will say six, of, six out of 10 are walking around in their life taking people for granted, completely oblivious to the fact that they are taking people for granted, right? That's when I realized why is this happening and the rest of the talk will be about why is this happening and how we can make a difference one thank you at a time, right? First, let's go through the general definition. The definition is readiness to show appreciation and return kindness. The fact is every single person bar none knows this. The problem, very few people use this in a powerful fashion. What is that? Uh, what, what have we got? We can always reimagine our worldviews about gratitude. And I will start off with a story that my friend Sally Hoxett shared. I, I think many of you know Sally Hoxett. She wrote uh, the, her latest book is called Fascinate. And it's a super fascinating book, by the way. <laughs> so uh, Sally shared this story with me. It was a gift that her dad, Dr. Howard Hoxett, had received. Here is the backstory. So one of Dr. Hoxett's patients, as you can guess by now, 30 years ago had fallen from a tree and was paralyzed waist down. And people said there is, there is no way he will walk ever in his life, right? So and then Dr. Hoxett being an orthopedic surgeon, uh, operated on him, fixed his back, and he is very happy living a full life, walking of course, and running, walking, skiing, everything. And then every single year on the day of the operation, he sends a gift to Dr. Hoxhead and uh, with a beautifully written thank you note. And in this case, it was a say, box of pecans, which it says, this is the 30th year, thanks. Now he could have just, uh, and it makes Dr. Howard's, uh, Hoxhead's day, right? It'll, it'll just bring tears in his eyes. It's so much that uh, Sally, who is uh, Hoxhead's uh, daughter, she gets tears in her eyes whenever she sees such a packet. Now, what is the lesson in this? Like, he could have just given a big gift on the day of the operation and said, now, Dr. Hawk said, our account is settled. You are a doctor, you did your job. I got, I am a patient, I paid for you, it's done. But the lesson, that big lesson to learn here is that life-changing gifts deserve a lifetime of gratitude. It's an important lesson to remember that some people in your life will come in and they are blessings in your life. And then they change your life, the trajectory of your life so much that you can't settle their accounts ever until you are alive, you are grateful to them. That's the biggest lesson from this story. Now, 
the 3 g's i have always because there is now there is 4 g in the telecom world but i always have a 3 g advantage like it starts with generosity and then if you are very generous it results in gratitude on the recipient of that generosity when the person is grateful it increases goodness which means they start, first of all they start feeling good about themselves and then they start feeling good about the fact that there are generous people around them and then they start becoming generous leading to a cycle of goodness and leading to a cycle of peace harmony everything now one of my friend uh, when i was just having a casual conversation he told me that sometimes he thinks about this concept that you know he thinks about all the people he has helped from the time he was in uh, high school and then all the people all those people who have forgotten that he helped them and the name that he came up with it is called the forgotten list and he said now it's a book it's not a list it's like a notebook full of people that he has forgotten and then i'm sure i if i want to make a list i will have one if you want to make a list you will have one all of us can make a beautiful list i don't know what we will do with it we can't frame it and keep it in our homes but it's not a it's not a happy thing the more you focus on the forgotten list the more you will focus away from those people that are indeed grateful and a blessing in your life but the real forgotten list is this the list of people that have touched your heart that have touched your life and you have forgotten to do something about it that is the real list that we have to do something with and we'll get there now behind every successful person is what i know there is a woman but <laughs> apart from that like uh, i didn't say behind every successful man i said behind every successful person there is lot of help always nobody reached here on their own from lots of people and you are no longer an exception you are definitely not an exception so if that is the case why is it that we don't take enough time to thank people uh, that do so much for our life and uh, one there are two reasons one of the reasons is uh we are in a 24 by 7 inter uh, always connected world right so because there is always something to consume when you have so much to consume you feel like reacting somebody posts updates their profile photo on facebook say like i think uh, when you like them we say okay i am engaging with them so there is work done and then you like a lot of people you are engaging with a lot of people right so when you do this a lot when you are full when you are a big victim of information overload what is missing is volition volition is the act uh, capacity to act with free will and how is it related to gratitude there is a any kind of significant impact somebody makes there is a time delay from the time they make the impact to the time the result of that impact happens suppose let's say somebody introduces you to someone in this in this particular awesomeness fest let's say they introduce you to a book agent they introduce to a potential customer tomorrow morning nothing will happen it may happen over the next one year two year maybe three years but by the time the result of that good thing about good consequence of that introduction takes place you have forgotten that the genesis was in this awesomeness fest and uh, for you to think reflect and act you need volition that means you need space for yourself where you you can reflect and think something good is happening to me but what what was the source of that goodness who are all the people that played the part in the goodness not yesterday not day before yesterday it may be years before this goodness happened in your life that's the first problem the second problem is the trap let's assume that you meet someone here and they know someone that you want to meet and uh, you say you know uh, they will make a 5 minute phone call and something magical happens and then you say yeah this is great all it took the for them was 5 minutes or just an email that they had to send but if you think about it the trap is that the 5 minute phone call is just the tip of the iceberg right it's an incremental cost sometimes it's easy to think of it as an actual cost but it's just an incremental cost what was the actual cost it might have taken them 10 years to build a relationship with someone and then you put the 5 minutes of incremental cost that's what the real cost to that person to make that introduction but if you miss it you will thank for that incre incremental cost but you will forget 
thank them for the actual investment and the cost, which is all the time and investment that they have made to make that five minute extremely effective. Does it make sense? The price of not thanking enough, and I wanted to put this here because I met all these people, some of them would say that uh, they would recount uh, probably one or two decades ago during their student life, they helped someone and then they forgot and they would, at the end of it, they would say, Raj, I've actually forgotten about it. Uh, they took me for granted, I've forgotten about it. And I would say, actually, you have not. You just, I'm a total stranger to you. And you are able to recount every single thing about that incident, even after two decades. I know you wanted to forget it. That I give it to you. But you have not forgotten. And they can't say this uh, outside and walk around, because people will say, if you give it with your heart, you should not expect anything back. And they will be probably right. And then they can't say it to many people, and they will say, why are you focusing on some, somebody that take, took advantage of you? Go and help somebody else. There are so many ways that they, people will explain it away. But actually, they are carrying that hurt and anger, and so, sort of an incomplete feeling that all they wanted to know was they mattered in somebody's life. And they didn't get that feedback, acknowledgement, appreciation in the right time. So the, with all those 120 interviews, I found that this is the real price of not thanking enough. The first is potential inclusion in a mental blacklist, right? It's like, uh, it's not a physical, it's not a published blacklist, right? It's in, inside the mind they will say, this guy is a J-E-R-K. And then I, I will make sure that next time I will be careful when I'm dealing with this, any transaction. And second thing is, you lose your license to make future requests because you also know that for the last generous act, you didn't acknowledge, appreciate, or thank them enough. So you will feel somewhat to make another request because with what face will you go and say, yeah, I took advantage of you yesterday, and today I want to take advantage of you in a very fresh manner. <laughs> it just won't make sense, right? Like, and you can't be a serial taking advantage person, right? So next is, this is, this is the more worst case scenario where if you don't acknowledge, appreciate, and thank other people for what is happening to you, who will you think is responsible for what is happening to you? It's you. You will think, it's, oh, I'm, uh, I'm making all this happen all by myself, it's all my strengths, and it is where you start overestimating your strengths, right? And then it will lead to future breakdowns because you don't really have those strengths. Some, so many people helped you, but you are thinking, I'm making all these things myself, right? Next is guilt. Because in your heart and soul and mind, you know that you should have done something right, you didn't. And if it is happening in a group setting, especially in uh, businesses and teams and everything, if somebody is helping somebody else and then that person is taking advantage of the person who is helping them, everybody else around them will know how, what, how to deal with you next time because they know that you are the J-E-R-K person, right? So, uh, then you may just take, uh, get used to taking people for granted. And then uh, that's not a, there are a lot of things on which you should build a personal brand. Taking advantage of someone as a personal brand is not a good one. And it's not fun. All these reasons show that it's not fun. There's a better way of living. And uh, I call this exercise, there are next few things are small exercises. We won't have time to do the actual exercise, but I will give it to you and then you can do it uh, when, you are, when you have some free moment. I call this the just one more exercise. Like think of any significant project that happened in the recent past. Anything, you published a book, you create, launched a website, you created something awesome, and then you start listing all the people that were responsible for this success. And when you think you are finally done, just think of one more person to add to the list. And I've done this like so many times, people say not one, they could get a lot more than one because you always miss someone. And then the second just one more is that now, now that you have a list, let's say there are 16 people, you start checking off people to whom you have appreciated, acknowledged or thanked, and probably let's say half of them, and think right today, with, before you leave this uh, hotel, can you thank one more person in a very thoughtful way? And it hardly takes five minutes to do that. And then keep doing this exercise until you check off all the names in the list. 
and you when you when those people receive those thoughtful notes cards or messages from you just like the sugar cubes that you are writing it will make their day then uh, how do we live in uh, how do we make this a daily practice right how do we make uh, live in a grateful uh, way there are two roadblocks that come up first one is the roadblock comes from the brands like any brand that is advertising there is a common theme they use first they have to show that your life sucks without that product like whatever is that product it could be a shaving blade so it could be a, a paper cup but they have to show that without the paper cup or the shaving blade your life sucks and then the product will come in and then they will say all the features of why this is the best and suddenly your life will be like you are living in heaven once the product is there right it's a common theme and i have i have studied storytelling as an art and science and i know that in even if it is a 30 second advertisement they have to show the black and white things your house is dirty then this 2500 dollar vacuum cleaner will come in and the house will be like heaven like a hotel right and then you are being exposed to these messages over and over and over again throughout the day and if you fall trap fall into that trap you will think there are so many reasons why my life is sucking right so something is wrong with my life and then uh, if you are not tempted to it the second is the social media again you can be tempted to just watch the watch your feeds and then somebody somewhere is always celebrating something right the my friend told me that at every day 0.3% of the world is celebrating their birthdays which means among your friends if let's say if you have 1000 friends at least 10 of them will be on vacation three of them are speaking at a conference something always is happening makes you feel that for some reason god left you out of this celebration equation <laughs> right once the brands are telling your life sucks without their products all your friends are celebrating and then you think why am i the one who is the targeted one <laughs> right so with that model it's very difficult to live a grateful life but this exercise you can, it can help you for the next 30 days assume that whatever happens in your life whatever happens you can only assign two labels for it one it's a gift second it's a lesson there are only two labels you can't put it's only a multiple choice question with only two choices gift or a lesson right so if that happens if you think about it as soon as you assign the gift label you are in a mood of celebration right that's the only thing it's a gift right you meet somebody awesome there are 350 awesome people here so you should, you should be full of gifts right so or a lesson is a mood of wonder those are the two most powerful moods that anybody can live in mood of wonder and mood of celebration so can you all at least try to make this a practice for the next 30 days yes that's awesome and uh, uh, last one the last but one is how to thank powerfully right so when you thank powerfully yeah, there are two aspects to it one is do something to anyone that uh, does some generous acts to you uh, something meaningful to what matters most to them and without adding more cost to them i'll tell you an example how not to thank powerfully somebody does something for you they reviewed your executive summary and you say you know what i think i need to take you out for lunch and when you take them out for lunch you say you exec- you reviewed my executive summary you gave some great points during the lunch i thought you will you can review my business plan because now that i am uh, i have you for lunch that's not thanking people that's trying to get free consulting so there's a big difference between thanking and free consulting like thanking powerfully you have to give back without adding cost to them last exercise is called the grateful project the grateful project is making four lists and i'll go over them quickly the first list is about them let's assume just for a sake of 10 seconds assume that yesterday was the last day now i am lying because all of you are alive and kicking so it's just an assumption that yesterday was the last day and you listed all the people that did something really good to you and touched your life that's the first list second list is called the bonus list the god gave you one more day and let's assume that it's not true let's assume that today was the last day and you just want to add a incremental list of all the people that touched you just today that's the two lists and the third list is about you 
let's say everybody around you everybody that you have touched they were making a list and this is the list of people that will put you in that grateful list today but the most powerful list is the tomorrow list in the tomorrow list let's assume that this this is happening tomorrow and everybody that you are touching tomorrow is making an incremental list of people a incremental list of people that touch them on tomorrow and will they add you in that list or not is the fourth list and if you can think of that list you will immediately revisit your priorities for tomorrow tomorrow will be very different because you you will start thinking how can you contribute in such a powerful way that they will start missing you in the past which i covered yesterday last keyword to remember is uh, the roti which is written on thank you written on thank you is not something that you will get it is something that you will become uh, and live a grateful life in a more powerful peaceful and harmonious way thank you so much